That was terrible. What's up, everybody? Good to see you guys, man. I'm Pastor Justin. We're starting a brand new series this morning called Not Feeling. Everybody say, Not Feeling It. Say it one more time. Not Feeling It. Some of you guys are like, yeah, I haven't been feeling it all morning, man. What's going on? Anyway, so we're talking about, we're talking about not feeling it. What do we do, man, when we don't feel our faith, when our emotions, when our feelings, what we think, what we, what we sense on the inside, when it doesn't necessarily line up or, or it doesn't feel like what we think, faith, or what we believe, ought to feel like. We're going to dig into that over the next few weeks. I want to remind you guys, too, man, uh, Arrow Student Ministries Takeover is tonight. At 6 o'clock, so uh, they, they were at the conference all weekend. They'll be back tonight uh, having their first and third uh, Sunday uh, evening uh, worship service. That's tonight at 6. So make sure your students get here and, uh, and, and get involved with that. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Everybody say 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. I'm just going to have you guys keep repeating stuff until I feel like we're all awake and all on the same page. So the quicker I feel that from you, the, the sooner we can quit repeating everything, okay? Here we go, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. It'll be on the screen. You can follow along on version. and we're just going to dive right in this morning. Uh, it says this real quickly. You guys have probably heard some version of this text uh, many, many times. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we live by believing or we walk by faith and not by seeing. Other translations say, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We live by believing, not by seeing. We walk by faith and not by by sight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much for your presence that is with us right now. Thank you for the moments that you uh, just seem to open up heaven and come down into our midst and, and make us keenly aware of you, Lord. I thank you that we've experienced such an encounter, such a moment today, Father. Lord, I thank you that even if we haven't experienced that this morning, even if we haven't felt that this morning, we can rest in the truth and the fact that your word declares that you are in fact with us. We're two or more gathered in the midst of your, in, in, in your name, you are in the midst of them. So Lord, I know one way or the other, you are here, you are ministering, you are ready to speak to every one of us today, and I pray that you will, Heavenly Father, do just that. That we will have our hearts opened up, our minds alert, our eyes open, our ears open to hear, to receive, to understand everything that you have us here to receive, to understand, and to hear this morning. In Jesus' name. Why don't you put your hand on your belly with me? Let's pray one time together. Say, Jesus, speak to me today. Open up my eyes. Open up my ears. Let me see what you want me to see. Let me hear what you want me to hear. So I can do what you want me to do. And be everything you've called me to be. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. So a few years ago uh, at another church, at a previous church that I was uh, leading, uh, our, my, our youth pastor, our, our student minister came in. And he also uh, led worship and, and did some computer stuff. And he came in real excited one day to my office. And he said, hey, check out, he said, check out this video, man. I think we should play it on Sunday morning. I think it would be really cool. I was like, all right, man, let's see. So he turned his laptop around. We sat there and watched it. And I just kind of watched it. It was a couple minutes long, and it was, you know, it was just kind of a, one of those, just kind of, kind of, uh, was, the idea was just get you ready for worship and kind of pump you up. And and, and he got and he, the video ended, and he, he was kind of looking at me, and uh, he was like, "Man, what do, what do you think? That's pretty cool, right?" And I just kind of said, "I go, man, I said, dude, I, I think I think we can probably do better, man. I'm I'm just I'm just not really feeling it." And uh, instantly, like, uh, you would have thought I just kicked his puppy. I mean, you know what I mean? Like his countenance just like sank and I was like I was like what I was like what's the matter I said I said what's the problem this is just some video you found on YouTube right it's not like you made the video or anything and he goes uh yeah actually pastor I, I did make this I, I spent a lot of time making this and I was like I was like oh if you had told me at the beginning that you made the video I may have I may have uh, tempered my response a little bit, even though I didn't really care for it. But, but I said that. I said, man, I said, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not feeling it. Now, that's probably a phrase that we have all used some version of in our lifetime, right? It's just, that's, a, that's a typical thing that we say, a uh, pretty, pretty common expression. I'm just, I'm just not feeling it. What do you think about that song? I'm just not feeling it. What do, you think, what do you think about how do you like these pancakes? I'm just not feeling it. I've never not felt pancakes, I don't think. But, but uh, you know, how, how do you like this dinner? I'm ah, just not really feeling it. What do you think of this outfit? Yeah, I'm just not really feeling it. And, uh, and so what it is, is is it speaks to the fact that we as people... Uh, in these weird little things that we do, this thing we do called life, we place an uh, insane amount of value uh, on how we feel. True? 
I mean, how we feel often goes to define whether or not we're having a good day or a bad day. How I feel often will begin to define who I am in the long run. I mean, if I feel a certain way for a long enough period of time, that will become part of my identity, correct? And so we place an unbelievable uh, amount of, of value on our feeling. The fact that this phrase, I'm just not feeling it, just to, just to be a thing that we dismiss or say that we don't like it or whatever, tells us how much value we place on feelings. And here is where the tension comes in. If we are living for Jesus and we are followers of Jesus and we're trying to do our best uh, to discover the path and the life that God has called us to live as followers of Jesus, as sons and daughters of God, listen, here's the thing. Faith often exists in a realm outside of our feelings. Amen? Let me say that again. Faith often exists in a realm that is beyond or outside of what we can register in our feelings. And so, and so God here, in his wisdom, I believe, in, in the word of God, tells us, listen, knowing that feelings can change. How many, have, how many have not felt something one moment and then the next moment you were feeling it? Right? You heard a song. I mean, sometimes if you just hear a song many, enough times, you'll just get in, your, it'll get in your head. And, man, a song you hated, all of a sudden, oh, I kind of like that song. Or a song you were really feeling, you hear it enough. Uh, and, and then all, there was a song a few years ago, oh, many years ago. Some of you guys remember this. Remember, remember that song uh, Nelly and Tim McGraw did together a few years back? Remember that song about some of you guys are hearing it right now. Because it's not in my head. You know what I'm talking about? I think about it over and over again. And the problem was that song came out on a summer, and it was like that summer jam, you know, 2009, 2010 or whatever. And they played that song over and over. And the, ironically, the name of the song was Over and Over Again. But uh, they, play, and they played it over and over to the point where at first I was like, man, I'm kind of feeling this. And then I heard that song so much, it's like, if I hear this song one more time, I'm going to blow my radio up. You know what I mean? And, and I wasn't feeling it. So our feelings can change. They can shift. They can be manipulated. They, they can be, they, you know, you know it's amazing. Like, this is amazing about feelings. This is what people know about how, about how powerful our emotions and our feelings are. Have you ever, have you, ever uh, you can find some of these on YouTube or on, online. Have you ever tried to watch like a, either a funny or like a, especially a romantic movie without the orchestral backtrack to it? It's literally the dumbest thing you have ever seen in your life. The dialogue, the conversation, none of it makes sense. The only reason that you feel any way about it at all is because there's music playing behind it that makes you feel a certain way about, about what's being said or what's going on. So, so the, dr the, dr the dramatic music makes the dialogue feel more dramatic. The, 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 when, somebody, when, when there's a funny scene going on and they're like, bum, 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 that, that music makes you feel like, oh, there's something like lighthearted and fun going on. But to watch that without it, it's like, why are we watching this? Who creates this? Who, who's getting paid to write this garbage? You know what I mean? And so why? Because our feelings are very powerful and they can be changed and they can be, they can be uh, uh, manipulated is, is, is a strong word, but they can be, they can be guided and, and to feel a certain way. So God shows up and through his word tells this, listen, followers of Jesus, if you're going to live this life and you're going to be a son and daughter of mine, listen, it would be a good idea for you, listen, to not live by your feelings, to not live by your sight, to not live by what you can feel, but rather live, walk by faith. We are called to live, to walk by faith, not by sight. Amen? And so we're going to dig into that, a little bit about what that means to us, where I'm going to kind of lay a foundation for where we're going to be going and teaching on the next couple of weeks here this morning. Let's talk about feelings Let's talk about feelings. Let's talk about emotions. What is it? What are our feelings? What, is, what defines feelings? Feelings are one of those things that it can be a little difficult to define because we've all felt them our whole lives, so we know what they are. But, but to find the words to describe, if you were to, if you were just to, 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 if you were to program a robot and try to define to a robot what feelings were, it may be difficult without someone who's had feelings to understand what those are. Right? But we're going to do our best here. Feelings are what? Feelings are an emotional state. Feelings are an emotional state. It's feelings are something we sense somewhere on the inside of us. Here's a really good definition of feelings, I think, from Webster's Dictionary. Feelings can be defined as unreasoned opinion or belief. Unreasoned opinion or belief. 
meaning I believe something or I think something for, with, without any reason or logic to back it up. I just feel it, right? Unreason, opinion, a belief, okay? So feelings exist. Where do feelings come from? Where are they when I feel something? Where is it? Some people may call it the gut. Man, I just kind of I just kind of play by my gut. I just kind of live by my gut. I just kind of do things according to my gut. Well, that's a, that's a place where it is. Really, in the Bible, the, the best place that we can understand that the Bible talks about where feelings come from would be what is called our heart. Everyone say our heart. Okay, our heart. Now, in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament Hebrew and the New Testament, the idea of the heart, the New Testament at some point uh, in Ephesians, Paul said, I want you to have a strong inner man. Amen. That inner man, that inner, that inner voice, your heart. That's that's talking about the heart. In the Old Testament, the 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 heart is is considered the inner part of a person's being, the inner part of your being, meaning basically your mind, your will, your emotions, your logic, your reasoning, all those conversations that go on on the inside of you that you don't talk about with anybody, that's all part of your heart, that's all part of your inner man, that's where the Holy Spirit resides, that's where the Holy Spirit renews, and that's where the Holy Spirit speaks to us, that's where the Word of God deposits into our heart, that's where God works in our inner man, that is our heart, and that's where our feelings Originate, that's where our feelings come from. Does that make sense? So those unreasoned, those unreasoned opinions and beliefs, those things that we have no reason to believe or, or, think, or think a certain way on or have an opinion on, we just feel it, we just sense it, those things come from our inner man, those things come from our heart. Now, here's the thing about feelings, okay? Feelings are not good and they're not bad, they just are. Amen? See, sometimes we have a tendency, and, uh, and, and, and one reason I, I, was, I, was, I was curious about looking up some statistics, because I think we can all, we all understand that there's been a lot of studies that have come out over the last uh, few years especially, over the last a couple years especially, about the rise in uh, people in America, in the United States of America, that are on antidepressants, that are on some sort of, some sort of mood-altering, basically some sort of chemical way to manage our feelings, and... and it, like the statistics of the jump in that are super, super, super high. However, one of the reasons that those numbers have jumped so high is because, is because until the last probably decade or so, talking about our feelings oftentimes made you feel weak, and it wasn't something that we were able to, to, to it wasn't socially acceptable, if you will, to say, man, I don't feel right, and I need help in the way that I feel because it's, it's, not, it's not the way it should be. It's broken. Come on, somebody. And so, and so there's been, and there still exists a lot of stigma surrounding mental illness, emotional distress, mental illness. Uh, and, 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 you know, again, when there's something, when my brain is not firing properly, when there's some sort of neuro, neurological pathway that's broken and that's damaged, whether that's from an injury, whether that's just through genetic wiring that got crossed somewhere. Listen, it's no different than a sickness. It's no different than a disease. Come on, somebody. And so, and so we need to remove that stigma. But I'm not here to talk about mental illness and stuff like that. But we do have this idea that, like, that like when I feel bad, because it's such we place so value on how we feel, if I feel bad, we take that identity on ourselves, and so I'm bad. There's something wrong with me because I don't feel right about something or about some issue or about some thing or about some season in my life. Amen? I was actually listening to a – I don't listen to a lot of Dr. Feld. It's happened to – watched this interview with Dr. Phil, and he was kind of talking about just kind of the behind-the-scenes stuff of his life and his story. It's actually quite interesting. But he says, so he made, a, he made a pretty interesting statement. He said, he said, listen, he goes, sometimes, and they were talking about, he was talking about, uh, he was talking about antidepressants and, and, and just kind of the overprescription of it and, and kind of his take on it and, and where he comes from with it. But he said, listen, <laughs> he said, <laughs> He said, look, some, he said, before I prescribe somebody or before I would recommend somebody going on medication, I'd first, let's, I'd first say, let's look at your life and see what's going on. Is there something going on in your life that's making you depressed? You know what I mean? He said, look, if you, if you just got a divorce and you just lost your job and, and you're struggling paycheck to paycheck, listen, if you're not depressed about that in your life, if you, if you feel okay about that, there's something wrong with you. There's like a bigger issue. Like those are, those are, those are, but, but if none of those things are going on and everything on the outside seems to be like it should and you still are dealing with this anxiety, you're still dealing with this depression, now maybe there's something deeper that we need to look at and we need to figure out. So, so the bottom line is these feelings, when we get these feelings, feelings are not good or bad, they just are. I know I went a long way to say that. I'm sorry. 
feelings just are. Feelings are just like, they're, they're like money. Money's not evil, it's not, and it's not great. It just is what it is. It's a tool. It's a thing. It's something we deal with. Feelings are not necessarily good or bad. They're not evil or, or pure. They just are. We just deal with them. We just have them. And in fact, they're a part of the way that God has created us. Amen? God has created us as cre- to be people, to be creatures that have this amazing ability to feel things, to have emotion, to, 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 to sense things that, that don't make any sense or to feel things that we can't really put our hands on and describe or, 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 or have a reason behind it, but we just know it. We just feel it. God has created us that way. In fact, many, many times, uh, many times God moves, and when God does something in our lives, he does it through our feelings. Amen? God will move in our hearts. The Holy Spirit will touch our hearts. He will speak something to our heart. He will, he will allow us to feel a certain way. Hopefully, that way then begins to develop into his word being deposited in our heart. That's all I care about. So feelings are not good. They're not bad. I know this is making some of you very uncomfortable because feelings are not something I do. Guess what? Feelings are not something I do either. Amen. <laughs> they're, they're not, I'm not a big feeling guy, um, at least that I'm going to sit up here and talk to you about. Uh, <laughs> but, but they just are, but we've got to talk about it. Why? Because it's a huge part of life. Just like relationship goals. Relationships are a huge part of our life. Feelings are a huge part of our lives. It's what we gather so much value on. And so if we don't understand a little bit about how to apply God's word to our feelings, guess what? It will be impossible for us to ever truly live by faith and not by sight. Amen? So feelings, they're not bad, they're not good, they just are. God created them, and here's, what, here's the thing. Here's where we got to draw the line. i got to understand about feelings. Listen, God created them, and God uses them. And feelings are not necessarily bad, and they are not necessarily good. They just are. But here's what God did say. God did just tell us in that scripture, that's kind of the whole baseline for this whole series. And what we're going to be looking at here, listen, even though feelings are, I deal with feelings, I have feelings, God created them, and God can use them, God can redeem them. Listen to me. However, God has said, I do not have to be ruled by them. In fact, God's word instructs us, do not live by your feelings. Instead, he says to live by faith. So what does that mean, to live by faith? What does it mean to live or to walk by faith, if that's your, your translation, to live or to walk by faith? That word in the original Greek where it says live by believing or, or walk by faith is the Greek word per, peripedio. Peripedio, here's what it means. It simply means how you progress it means to make progress it means to make use of one's opportunities listen to this it means to regulate one's life okay so so the word of god says the regulating factor in your life should be not feelings not sight not what you can see taste touch sense smell or beyond those senses what you feel He says what should regulate your life, what should be progressing your life, what should cause your life to move forward is, in fact, faith. Okay? So what is faith? Well, this is another question we have to answer. What is faith? The Greek, the word faith, all throughout the New Testament, the Greek is the word, in in the original Greek language, the word faith is this Greek word pistis. Okay? And it's got several different versions of that, several different uh, variations of that throughout the New Testament, but it's that very basic root word. And that word faith means this. The word pistis in the original Greek language takes, it, it's, it's beyond, uh, it's a step beyond just simply believing, okay? This Greek word pistis means to be convinced, to have a conviction in your heart about something. I believe something because I've been convicted, whether by evidence or by my feeling or by some other manner, I am convicted that this is the truth and nothing's going to move me. I know this to be true. In fact, that Greek word pistis takes that word faith and believing beyond just simply believing because of what I see. It means that I believe because I've been convinced in my heart. And, and, and regardless of what it looks like on the outside, I am convinced of what truth is. That's faith. Okay? So we live by faith. Now, this, the, underlying, the underlying tone of this whole idea is this. Because here's a key element of faith that you have to understand. Okay, Faith is not just some force out in the cosmos somewhere you know this is not some you know you might the the uh the oscars were a couple weeks ago and uh it's kind of that awards grammys were a little bit ago the golden globes all that and a lot of times you see people getting an award and and they'll get up and they'll give somewhere in their speech they'll say well 
Well, you know, it just my faith, my faith got me here. Okay. The question is this, faith in what? Amen. Some people just have a lot of people who would maybe call themselves, mm, these are people that would define themselves as spiritual but not religious. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 <laughs> meaning you have your own definition of what spirituality is based on just your own feelings, nothing concrete. Amen. Okay, here's the thing about faith. Faith has to have a source. Faith has to have something to be rested upon. Faith has to have a conviction that is rested upon something other than your own faulty, shaky, changing feelings. So for me to live by faith, that faith has to be grounded in something. And the word of God actually tells us to put our faith in someone. His name is Jesus. So we live by faith. That faith is based, that faith is convinced by my relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Okay, you follow me so far? I know this is a little teachy this morning. Okay? So to live by faith means that my faith in Christ is what's regulating my life. Let me just, let me just give you a really simple, simple definition here. To live by faith. Here's what it means. To live by faith means that it is faith that is making my decisions, not my feelings. The steps that I take, I walk by faith, I live by faith. Those things are based on faith, not sight, not feelings, not what I feel. Amen, somebody? Now, because, here's the great news. Because we are called to live by faith, guess what? Living by faith means I don't have to be a slave to my emotions and my feelings. Amen? Now, that is some good news that can set you free if you'll take that into your heart this morning. You and I, as people of faith, are not obligated to be ruled by our emotions and our feelings. Okay? We can live and walk and be ruled by faith. How many have heard this this great piece of advice? Because this is the problem. When I'm ruled by feelings, when I'm ruled by emotions... When I'm a slave to my emotions and my feelings, some people might simply call that, well, I'm just a person who, I just follow my heart. To many of those, I might say, bless your heart. You know what bless your heart means? It's Christian, so you're stupid. (laughs) The other day, the other day I did a funeral. <laughs> the other day I did a funeral. The worst funeral I've ever done. I was appalled by my performance. <laughs> I, started, I started off reading the obituary of the person who had deceased. I read his name. because I, I always I, I, Here I just, you know, I got just a few notes. When I do something like that, I like to have that all written out because I don't want to mess up. You know what I did in my notes? I forgot to change the name of the last funeral I'd done. I changed the first name, but for whatever reason, I just missed the last name. So, yeah, 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 that's right. With people grieving the loss of their loved one, the pastor, who's supposed to be God's uh, instrument of comfort and grace, started off by saying, we're gathered here to mourn the loss of so-and-so, and and I read the wrong name. And I could hear whispers, and and I kind of looked up, and and the family member was sitting on the front, and they said, That was bad enough. Seven and a half minutes later, (laughs) for whatever reason, I forgot to put my phone on silent. And I got a phone call in the middle. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know what they said? You know what they said to me after that? They said, bless your heart. (laughs) So, so... (laughs) I knew what it meant. I was like, you know what? You're absolutely right. Uh, my bad. I don't know what happened. That was a bad, that was a bad moment on me. <laughs> I, just, I just follow my heart. If you Google, you, you can find all sorts of famous quasi and pseudo inspirational quotes about following your heart. Here's a couple. Follow your heart. And happiness will follow. To that I question, really? Really? Follow your heart and happiness will follow, okay? 
ask the person who followed his heart, had an affair with someone uh, other than his wife, and uh, ruined his family, destroyed his family, uh, and had to start all over and, and got a divorce, and, uh, and now only sees his kids uh, every other weekend. Ask him how following his heart went for him because he followed his heart. Come on, somebody. Ask that person who followed their heart, got mad uh, at their boss one day, and decided, you know what, I'm done with this place, I'm quitting, walked out of their job, and then it took them two months to find another job, and uh, in the meantime, they had to nearly go bankrupt because they couldn't afford anything, couldn't pay their bills, because they followed their heart uh, when they didn't have the, any savings saved up to do so, and that's about how happy they are, because they followed their heart. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's, it seems, the way we usually take that kind of advice it, it seems wise, and it seems good, and it seems like, yes, I want to be a person who, who follows my heart, follows my dreams. And, 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 and we're going to get to that in just a few moments, but, but really, that's not always great advice, following your heart. Hey, here's a great quote about following your heart. There are no rules, just follow your heart. You know what's quoted as saying that? And I certainly don't, listen, don't take this the wrong way. I do not mean any disrespect in it. I didn't quote it, this person did. You know who quoted that? Robin Williams. Follow, follow your heart. Listen, maybe not the best advice on, on following your heart. If you know, I mean, Robert Williams died a few years ago by committing suicide. He, had, he was distressed emotionally, mentally, in his feelings. Something wasn't right. Now listen, I'm not casting any dispersions or condemnation on mental illness. My heart breaks for that. What I'm saying is that that may not be the best advice. Amen? Here's another one uh, on, on following your heart. <clears throat> Uh, this is maybe, maybe again, just kind of, we see it, it just, it sounds good, but it doesn't hold water. Follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else, everything else is secondary. You know who said that? Steve Jobs. Now, I respect greatly Steve Jobs' uh, 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 what he's added to our lives, to my life. I carry around an iPhone, I got a Mac computer, and I got an iPad at home. Okay? I love all those products, but guess what? He said everything else is secondary. Now, if you know anything about Steve Jobs' personal life, the kind of father he was, the kind of family man he was, uh, especially early on in his life, not the best advice. Come on, somebody. Okay? And you, we can go on and on and on talking about all the, but when you, and it's so, so we say, well, I just want to follow my heart. I want to, I want to just, you know, just live by my gut. Listen, here's the problem with all the ideas about following the heart because they sound so good on the outside and they usually sound so great. But here's the problem. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, this is what the Bible says about your heart. It says the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? Okay? <laughs> That's your heart. That's my heart. The source of what, of what defines and what gives us these things that we deal with on a daily basis called feelings. Guess what? That, the Bible says, is the most deceitful and wicked parts of all of our bodies is the human heart. Okay? Okay? What are we, you've heard of this before. What is it? The heart of the human problem is what? The human heart. Why? Because it's, we're all desperate. It's deceitful. It's tricky. It's manipulative. It's difficult to discern. And so the problem with following your heart is this. If I'm a person who follows my heart, who lives by my feelings, who lives by what I feel, who lives by what, I, what my gut tells me, guess what? That means that I'm essentially following something that at its core is wicked and deceitful. Amen? And I can mess my life up. I can jack myself up real bad if all I ever do is follow my heart. Amen? It's getting quiet. Why is it getting so quiet in here this morning? So understanding this, listen, understanding this to be a problem in Christ, again, he gives us a better alternative. Don't follow your heart. Don't live by your heart. Don't live by your emotions. Live by faith. Everybody say live by faith. Live by faith. Here's, here's, what, here's what choice is. Listen to me now. I can either let my faith manage my feelings or I can let feelings manage my faith. 
Amen. I can either let my faith manage my feelings and I can let that be the regulator. I can let that be the decider. I can let that be the, be the, be the governor of my life. Or I can let my feelings dictate to me what my faith is going to be like. I can either live by my faith or I can live by my feelings. Which one are we going to choose? I can follow my heart or I can follow my faith. What's it going to be? And then I know, I know, I can hear the arguments. I can hear the arguments right now. But, 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 preacher, I can't help how I feel. And guess what? You're 100% right. You cannot help the feelings that that wickedly, des- that desperately wicked and deceitful heart come bring into your life, bring into your mind. You cannot help that. I, if I if I see something that ticks me off, that is an involuntary response. I cannot I cannot help that anger. Come on, somebody. Okay, I can, you're right. You can't help your feelings. I can't help those feelings. But what I can do, what I can do, is decide that I'm not going to be ruled by those feelings that I'm not going to be managed by those feelings, that I'm not going to allow those feelings to be my master. I'm going to make by faith, I'm going to let faith be my master. I'm going to surrender to Christ and let Jesus be my master, live by faith, and I'm going to make my feelings my slave. Now, this is something, listen to me now, guys. I've, it, takes me, it took me uh, 35 seconds to say that. It's going to take all of us a lifetime to master. And guess what? When we die and breathe our last breath, we probably still won't have mastered it. But that's the fight. That's the struggle. That's what we do. And I'm determined I am not going to let a deceitful, wicked feelings, I'm not going to let a, my heart manage my life in Christ. Amen? So, so how? How do we do that? How can I do that? How can I not be ruled by my feelings? How can I let my faith manage my feelings and not the other way around? Here's a couple of ideas. Here's a couple of, uh, here's a couple of suggestions to answer that question how. Listen to me close. Number one, I've got to figure out I've got to figure out, is this feeling, does this feeling that, I, that I'm feeling, does it line up with faith? How do I figure out if it lines up with faith? i got to ask myself, does this feeling line up, or does this thought, does this emotion, does this line up with the Word of God? Is this thing that I'm feeling, is this, is this, does this have, uh, is this in agreement with Scripture? Is this in agreement with the Word? Okay. So you say, well, again, I can't help how I feel. You're right, you can't help how you feel. But look at what Paul said here in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, talking about feelings and thoughts and emotions. Listen to what he said. He said, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. So what is Paul saying? Paul's saying that, listen, when a thought or a feeling or emotion comes into our lives, we've got to take that thing captive and not let that thing take us captive. And we've got to make that thing obedient to Christ. Amen? So how do I, now here's the thing. I can't do that. I can't do that unless, unless I'm at some point in my life putting the word of God inside of my heart. Amen? You see, I think it's, it's not, it's, when we stand up and say, man, you need to read the Bible every day. You need to have a time where you open up your word and get the Bible inside of you every day. I don't care if it's a verse. I don't care if it's a scripture. I don't care if it's a devotional thought that gives you some word and gives you some thoughts on it to start your day or to end your day or to do it in the middle of the day or whenever you've got the time to do it, you've got to get the word. That is, listen, that is not just some religious exercise so that you can feel good about, your, uh, about being a good Christian and go, well, I've read my Bible today, check the note. Listen, I've got to get the word of God inside of me so that when feelings do come up, I can have something to measure them with amen i gotta decide is it is it feelings or is it faith hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 i don't have this on the screen for you but hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 uh the, the author of hebrews says that the word of god is sharp sharper than any two-edged sword it is living and active and it says it separates the joints in the marrow and it says it discerns and it, and it cuts apart the secret thoughts and attitudes of the heart The heart is deceitful and wicked and manipulative. It's the most deceitful of all things. And the word of God has the ability to cut through all that noise and give us something concrete to, find, to figure out, is it feeling or faith? Amen? So i got to figure out if it's feeling or faith. To do that, i got to get into the word. Here's the second thing. This is only got two, things, two suggestions here on, on, this, on this idea of how to begin living by faith and not being ruled by my, by my feelings. Listen, 
figure out if it's feeling or faith. The second thing is this. Let's try expressing our feelings and acting on faith. Okay? Now, let me unpack that statement a little bit. What are you talking about? <laughs> let's say it this way. Instead of acting on feelings and expressing my faith, let's try expressing our feelings while acting on faith. Here's what happens. I'm guilty of this very much. Okay? Too many times, I think, what we do is we express our faith and act on our feelings. So we come to church and we worship, or we'll pray, we'll have our morning devotion time, because the pastor says that's what we're supposed to do. We'll read our Bible, and we do all these expressions. We'll, put, we'll, we'll wear Christian t-shirts, and, and we'll post scriptures on our Facebook wall, and, and, and we're expressing, express, we're talking, we're expressing our faith. But when it comes time to make a decision, when it comes time to take a step, we act on whatever we feel. Regardless of whether that feeling is lining up with faith at all. Instead, what we ought to do is we ought to express our feelings. I know that now, when as soon as I say express your feelings, myself included, I begin to sweat and I begin to get very uncomfortable. I do not like to express my feelings. Okay? It is awkward. (laughs) And for me... You, this is, I think, goes to a different personality types. Like for me, the only feeling that I'm comfortable expressing is rage and anger. Now that may not be the real. Dry, this is what I've learned about myself. That a lot of times, that that rage when I'm going off, that's not the real motivating feeling. But it's the only one that I feel comfortable enough expressing, because it makes me feel big and strong. To be demonstrative so so it makes me so i've got this see i've got this thing going on the inside of me i got this hurt i got this pain i got this weird emotion that's making me feel very small so i express that very big to make me feel better and so i express it it's not the right way to express it i'm not telling you it's the right way to express it i'm saying that's what we do we express our we we, we need to figure out how to express our feelings in healthy ways and then let's let our faith be what we act on so, so I express and I say and I, and I admit, man, I'm feeling unsure. I'm feeling doubtful. I'm feeling like I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little uneasy. I'm feeling a little hurt. I'm feeling a little angry. I'm feeling a little disappointed. I'm, and, we, and we get that out. And then once we get it out, now we say, okay, now that I've expressed my feelings, what does faith tell me to do? What does my relationship in Jesus What does my walk with God, what does that tell me I should do with that feeling? Come on, somebody. And I believe if we would begin to put ourselves to that, I don't know if I would begin to put myself to that, man, that could literally change the entire course and direction of my life. Because listen to me, friend, listen to me, son and daughter of God. Listen to me, family. God did, Jesus has not saved us, died on the cross for us, filled us with the Holy Spirit for us to live the next 60, 70 years of our lives completely a slave to whatever our hearts tell us to be a slave to and feel. There has got to be a better way. And that way is living by faith. Living by faith. Jesus did this. Listen, Jesus did this. Jesus, in in John uh, chapter 17, uh, or I'm sorry, John chapter... uh, 11, 12, in the story of Lazarus, Jesus, listen, Jesus felt, see, here's what happens. We act on our feelings and we refuse to express it because we don't know what to do with it. And, and again, there's this stigma. Well, I'm feeling bad, so that makes me bad. Or I'm feeling blue, and that makes me blue. That, that is like defining my whole life. So there's this whole thing. Listen, Jesus allowed himself to feel very deep hurt and pain and regret. In the story of Lazarus, the Bible says in that story that Jesus broke down and wept over the loss of his friend, okay? He, what did he do? He expressed his feelings. But once he expressed his feelings, he then stood up and said, you know what? God's going to get the glory out of this situation. God has allowed this to happen so that he can get glory. Read the story. Lazarus, come forth. What did he do? He sets the example. He expressed his feelings, expressed his emotions, but he didn't let his mourning and his emotions dictate what he did. He then acted in faith. Amen? 
He did this again in the Garden of Gethsemane. In the Garden of Gethsemane, right before he goes to the cross, what's he do? He cries out to God. He says, God, if it's at all possible, let this cup pass from before me. What is he saying? He said, I don't feel like doing this. I don't, I'm not feeling this. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. He expresses his feelings, and he, of course, he acts on faith. We express our feelings, act on faith. Now, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 and 10. I'm going to be done in about two and a half minutes. Let's read verse 9 again. The Lord is speaking through Jeremiah. He says, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? Verse 10, but I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. Who can know how bad the human heart is? Who can know the human heart? The Lord says, I do. I search all hearts. I know all the secret thoughts and motives of all men. I know your heart. Okay? So I don't want us to feel left in this place where we're like wondering, like, well, if my heart is deceitfully wicked and I can't trust my feelings and I can't trust my emotions and I can't trust my heart and I can't follow my heart, what am I to do? What, what, what can be done? What, what am I supposed to do? Listen, you may not be able to know your heart and discern your heart as well as you think you can, but guess what? You can know the one who does. You can know the one who does.